Dolady Slaw Sikorsky's death controversy revolves around the death of the Commander-in-Chief of the Polish Army and Prime Minister of the Polish Government in Exile, General Olady Slaw Sikorsky, in the 1943 B-24 crash in Gibraltar. Sikorsky's Liberator II crashed off Gibraltar almost immediately after takeoff, with the plane's pilot being the only survivor. The catastrophe, while officially classified as an accident, has led to several conspiracy theories that persist to this day, and often propose that the crash was an assassination, which has variously been blamed on the Soviets, British, Nazis, or even a dissenting Polish faction. The incident is still described by some historians as mysterious, and since 2008 it has been under an investigation by the Polish Institute of National Remembrance, ongoing as of July 2013. Death of Sikorsky In late May 1943, Sikorsky went to inspect Polish forces stationed in the Middle East. He was inspecting the forces and raising morale of the Polish troops there. He was also occupied with political matters, around that time, a conflict was growing between him and General Olady Slaw Anders. The main reason for this was that Sikorsky was still open to some normalization of Polish-Soviet relations, to which Anders vehemently objected. On July 4, 1943, while returning from the Middle East, Sikorsky perished, together with his daughter, his chief of staff, Tadeusz Klimeki, and seven others, when his aircraft, a Consolidated Liberator II, serial number AL-523, crashed into the sea 16 seconds after takeoff from Gibraltar Airport at 23.07 hours. Investigation and Controversy A British court of inquiry convened on July 7 that year investigated the crash of Sikorsky's Liberator II serial AL-523, but was unable to determine the cause finding only that it was an accident and due to jamming of elevator controls, noting that it has not been possible to determine how the jamming occurred but it has been established that there was no sabotage. The Polish government refused to endorse the report, due to the contradiction about the cause not being determined but sabotage being ruled out, and pursued its own investigation, which suggested that the cause of the accident cannot be easily determined. The political context of the event, coupled with a variety of circumstances, immediately gave rise to numerous speculation that Sikorsky's death had been no accident, and may have been the direct result of a German, Soviet, British, or even Polish conspiracy. Some of the earliest suggestions of a conspiracy were popularized by Nazi propaganda, which suggested that Sikorsky's death was the result of a British-Soviet conspiracy. Some modern sources still note that the accident is not fully explained, for example Jerzy Janlerski in his Historical Dictionary of Poland, 1996, entry on the Gibraltar, catastrophe of, notes that there are several theories explaining the event, but the mystery was never fully solved. As Roman Wapinski noted in his biographical entry on Sikorsky in the Polish Biographical Dictionary in 1997, no conclusive evidence of any wrongdoing has been found, and Sikorsky's death is officially classified as an accident. The unresolved questions surrounding his death have led to a number of publications, in historical and mainstream press, in Poland and abroad. Commenting on them in 2009, Polish historian Andrzej Garlicki, building on a similar argument by historian Marian Kukiel, stated that all conspiracy theories about Sikorsky's deaths are irresponsible fiction. In 2008, the Polish Institute of National Remembrance, IPN, began an official inquiry into the incident. Sikorsky was exhumed and his remains were examined by Polish scientists, who in 2009 concluded that he died due to injuries consistent with an air crash, and that there was no evidence that Sikorsky was murdered ruling out theories that he was shot or strangled before the incident, however they did not rule out the possibility of sabotage, which is still being investigated by the Institute of National Remembrance. The investigation was ongoing as of July 2013. One of the IPN historians, 
Meshij Korkuk, has stated that many facts suggest an assassination, although another, Andre Kwalba, notes that there is insufficient evidence to support this claim. He also complains that some British and Spanish documents still remain classified, hindering the investigation. The British documents concerning the accident will not be uncovered until 2050, before that date, they will remain top secret. Alternative Explanations and Conspiracy Theories Since the day of the accident, there was uncertainty about who boarded the plane and about the exact cargo manifest all leading to uncertainty as to the identity of the bodies recovered from the crash site, some bodies, including that of Sikorsky's daughter, Zofia, were never recovered. Since several bodies were never found and the bodies of several members of Sikorsky's entourage were never positively identified, some conspiracy theorists such as journalist and amateur historian Darius Balasahuski postulate that some might have been murdered on the ground while others might have been abducted to the Soviet Union. Balasahuski and Tadehuski Saluski are among those who point out the opportunity the Soviets had at Gibraltar. At about the same time that Sikorsky's plane was left unguarded at the Gibraltar airfield, a Soviet plane was parked nearby, it carried Soviet Ambassador Ivan Maisky, giving the Soviets an officially confirmed presence at the site of the accident. The head of the British Secret Intelligence Service's counterintelligence for the Iberian Peninsula from 1941 to 1944 was Kim Philby the Soviet double agent who would defect in 1963 and later claim to have been a double agent since the 1940s. Before 1941, Philby had served as an instructor with the Special Operations Executive, an organization specializing in sabotage and diversion behind enemy lines. Among the rumored kidnap victims a prominent role is given to Sikorsky's daughter, Zofia Lesnioska who was reported in 1945 to have been spotted in a Soviet gulag by a member of the elite Polish commandos, Sikosiemny, Tadeusz Kabalinski. Kabalinski attempted in 1945 or 1946 to gather Army Akrajawa personnel for a mission to rescue Lesnioska. Another controversy surrounds the sole survivor of the flight, a Czech officer, Eduard Prischau. Prischau like many pilots who did not wish to tempt fate was known for never wearing his May West life jacket but on this occasion, when rescued from the sea, he was wearing one. During the inquiry he denied this, and later blamed the inconsistency on post-crash shock affecting his actions and memory essentially, on amnesia. Later he explained that he must have instinctively put the vest on when he realized the plane was in trouble. Polish aviation expert Jerzy Mariniak created a simulation of the crash, in which he concluded that the plane must have been under control up until the very moment of the crash. Kisaluski argues that the plane was likely under the control of the second pilot, who died in the crash. Other conspiracy theories point to the British, the German Abwehr Intelligence Agency or the Poles themselves, some of whom, especially under the command of General Anders, had shown animosity toward Sikorsky for, at least from their point of view, his policy of colluding with Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin, which reached new heights by the Germans' April 1943 discovery of mass graves filled with thousands of Polish prisoners of war murdered by the Soviets at Katyn Forest in 1940. Most notably though, in 1967 the controversial British historical writer David Irving published a book dedicated to this incident, and suggesting British complicity in the incident. Meanwhile, it seems unlikely to some that the Nazis dedicated adversaries of Sikorsky and vice versa who had secret agents of the Abwehr just across the border in neutral Spain, would have wanted to murder Sikorsky, as he was worth more to them alive instead of dead. In his book Disasters in the Air, former KLM pilot and one-time IFLPA president Jan Bartolski, of Polish origin, suggests that the crash of the Liberator that carried General Sikorsky was caused by a half-empty mail bag jammed between the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator, thus freezing the controls and preventing F-LT Prischal from gaining altitude after takeoff. 
The mail bag was in the cargo compartment and was blown out of the aircraft through the side hatch, which in normally configured liberators would have served to protect the machine gun position, by a strong airflow rushing through the nose gear door. In other media The crash of Sikorsky's Liberator is portrayed in the 1958 film The Silent Enemy, in which the team of Royal Navy divers charged with retrieving Sikorsky's briefcase from the wrecked aircraft is led by Lionel Buster Crabbe, himself later to disappear in 1956 in mysterious circumstances while diving in the vicinity of a visiting Soviet warship. In 1968, the play sold Aden. Necrolog auf Genf, Soldiers, an obituary for Geneva, by German writer Rolf Hotchhuth debuted in London. The play partially drew on the work of David Irving and contained the sensational allegation that Winston Churchill had been in on the plot. In Hokahuta's play, Sikorsky and other passengers were murdered by axe-wielding British commandos. Hotchhuth, unaware that the plane's pilot Edward Prichal was still alive, accused him of participating in the plot. Prichal won a libel case that seriously affected the London theatre which staged the play. Hotchhuth never paid the 50,000 British pounds imposed on him by the court and subsequently avoided returning to the UK. In 2011, he revealed his source for Churchill's involvement as Jane Ledigroyold, the British wife of his publisher Heinrich Maria Ledigroyold, nay Jane Scatcherd. According to Hokahuta's biographer Birgit Lohan, these rumours relayed by Jane Ledigroyold had been the sole source for the allegations in the play. In 2009 a Polish film, General Zamach na Gibraltars was filmed, focusing on a plot to assassinate Sikorsky. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.